here's a question. A close family member, maybe a sibling or maybe a spouse is in trouble. They need some money, but it's not their first rodeo. Do you help even if they take advantage of you or do you distance yourself showing some tough love? An addiction recovery expert offers his advice. The first step in the 12 steps of AA is that we admitted we're powerless over alcohol and our lives have become unmanageable. The first step of Al-Anon, which is a 12-step group for families, is we admitted we're powerless and our lives have become unmanageable. So in the, in the um, AA 12 steps, it's powerless over alcohol. In Al-Anon, it's powerless over anything to do with the person who's using. Mm -hmm. You don't have control over that. And, and just to clarify, ways, AA is for the patient, Al-Anon is for families. Exactly. Okay. But th it, it, there's two things that happen. One is that it's terrifying for, for families to think, I can't fix this, I can't control this. At the same time, it's so freeing for them to know, it's out of my hands. I can't control this. Right. And I, I can stop running around trying to keep this person from experiencing the consequences. When people use the word enabling, what that means is it's in a loving attempt to try to help that's not helping. Right. You, it's, it's, you, you, you beat me to my next question. I watch a lot of those intervention shows on yes, TV, so that's yes. why I get to ask all these questions. But enabling is one that often the, the, the addiction specialists bring up with the family. Right. Because the family feels in control if they're at least providing the money or knowing. Or, or withholding. Or money. withholding, but at the end, enabling isn't helping. No. Enabling is an attempt to reduce the consequences of that person's use. Mm -hmm. But that doesn't help them because people have heard the phrase hit bottom. Hitting bottom means experiencing the negative consequences of continued use. Right. And if you soften that blow, they don't. They never learn. Right. In the field, there's something called the gift of desperation. And that is one of the things that motivates people to stop using, is that they, they get sick and tired of being sick and tired, and they stop. Right. But they do that with help. Right. Families are in there trying to buffer them from being hurt. And they're doing it because they love the person, but it's counterproductive. Right, but then that, that opens our, our to discussion to our next point, which I think could be great, but also tricky, mm -hmm. the healthy boundaries. Yes. How do you set healthy boundaries? It's, well, listen, it's difficult to set healthy boundaries, even without this disease. Right. For parents to let go of their children is a really, really important step. When do you do that? Well, you do it several times. You do it when they're two. The favorite favorite word for a two-year-old is no. Right. And what they're saying is, I'm not you. I'm a different person. I don't want what I don't want what you want. And so, parents need to understand that that's a developmental phase they're going through. Adolescence is another one. What what I would try to help parents see is that the the person with this disease needs to take responsibility, and they need to hear from you that you have total faith in their ability to do it. Right. that they don't need you to micromanage their recovery, mm -hmm. that they need to know that they have whatever it takes with support to get sober and stay sober. Right. And I know you have a good breakdown of the difference between those healthy boundaries and unhealthy boundaries, and I want to go through them. So when you say <clears throat> healthy boundaries, what does that mean? Well, um, basically it's, it's understanding that I, my um, control stops at, at the end of my hands, mm -hmm. and that your control stops and starts with you. That I can be supportive, I can be honest, but um, I can't, I can't uh, tell you what, how to live your life or how. Uh, we, 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 we have a lot of shows. Um, a lot of people are familiar with um, Everybody Loves Raymond. Right. And that's, I use that as an example of, of boundary issues. The mother on Deborah that show. Deborah doesn't have boundaries. Well, <laughs> Marie. Marie doesn't have boundaries. Yes. That's what I mean. Marie doesn't have right. boundaries. And uh, there was a family that uh, it was funny what they were doing, but if you had to actually live that, it would be maddening. It's, it's letting your child become an adult. Mm -hmm. And what that means is, as a parent, I've got to admit that I'm not so necessary anymore. Okay. In fact, my being necessary is a hindrance to that person becoming a fully fledged. So that's an unhealthy boundary. Yes. Okay. To step in where it's, um, my help is not being asked for. Right. Okay. Now, another goal of family recovery program is to rebuild that trust. And we were talking a little bit about that. So, again, how do we create that? Is that more of... 
as you said, you have to give a little time. and build from there. Time. You give, you give a little, you give it time and see what happens. Uh, I don't think it's healthy for somebody. They want to give complete trust, but um, basically I'm saying um, I don't want you watching them like a hawk, but I don't want you uh, to think that uh, they're going to be sober from the day they walk out of rehab until right. the rest of their lives. You don't know that. Right. You, you, what we want them to do is we want the family members to focus on themselves, to, to put their focus on themselves and find ways for them to be happy and them to be healthy and invite the other person to be part of that, but not to, not to make their health a determination of whether I can be happy. Right. Now, I imagine, though, that watching a child struggle with addiction is very different than watching a, a parent, let's say, or a spouse suffer with, with addiction. So how do you begin to repair those types of relationships? Well, it depends on what, what we're talking about. Uh, again, I, I've worked with parents who have 50-year-old children. Right. And that's different from a parent who has a 24-year-old. Um, even the 24-year-old, that, that person really needs to become an adult. And that's a process that takes place. And what we're asking them to do is to speed up the process because that 24-year-old may have started using when they were 14. Wow. And if they've been using the uh, chemical as a way of coping, they probably haven't developed a lot of coping skills. So they need to s develop some coping skills. But th there are a lot of coping skills you don't get to work on unless you face adversity. And if the parents are jumping in to uh, fix things, then that person doesn't ever get to experience. Well, we have to let our kids fail a little bit. Exactly. So they can learn. Right. And help them to see how they failed, but not to be critical of the failure, because a mistake is a, an opportunity for learning. Right. And if the family doesn't allow for mistakes, then there's never any learning. To learn more about addiction recovery, be sure to visit us online. Remember, if you have a question, reach out. You can send us an email by visiting our website, allhelptv.com, or give us a call, 855-796-4475.